It's the Daily Doug. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. We have made it to the end of the week. It is a Friday and I am pumped for today's Masterpiece Friday. I get excited anytime that I go back to music by Rush. And today we are going to dive into their album Signals. We're looking at side one and I am happy that you're joining me. So this will be my 14th video dedicated to music from this classic Canadian rock band. As far as albums go, uh, we've listened to uh, Moving Pictures. That was last fall. Uh, we listened to uh, Permanent Waves. That was earlier this year. Uh, we've also recently looked at their Fear trilogy. And uh, we also have recently uh, listened to their epic, 2112, a new recording of that that I had not yet heard, a live recording done back in the 70s. All of that is available here on the channel. But today, we're looking at signals. And I got to tell y'all, I have a, uh, a really lovely copy of this. I just got to get it off of the turntable. Check this out, y'all. Picture disc, vinyl. This is the 40th anniversary uh, edition. We got the dog there on the front paying homage and looking up to the big fire hydrant there and then uh, doing what the dog does best on the other side. We're not going to listen to this side today. We're just sticking with uh, the good dog side. Today I have imported all of this audio and I've checked it to make sure that it's okay and ready to go and that's what we're going to look at. It's going to be fun. So Signals, this is their ninth album. Uh, it was released in the fall of 1982. This album turns 41 next month, y'all. It's a classic, classic album. And it came out about a year and a half after Moving Pictures and almost a year after their second live album, which was called Exit Stage Left. And uh, with this album, with Signals, the band, as I read in here, continued their move into the sound of the 80s. They were uh, changing with the times, and uh, they continued to up their usage of synthesizers and sequencers and you know, keep moving forward as a group of artists, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, before, though, we uh, dive into side one, I would like to talk today about our sponsor for today's episode, which is NordVPN. Megan and I have been using NordVPN for quite some time, so I am thrilled that they are now a sponsor on the channel. Uh, the product gives us immense peace of mind because our business is completely located online. If you want to get NordVPN and, and get some savings, go to nordvpn.com slash Doug Helvering. But you may be asking, well, what does it do and how does it work and how does it help me? It helps me in a variety of ways, friends. Uh, it encrypts my online traffic to help keep cyber attackers at bay. It also uh, has a threat protection feature that recognizes malicious web links, and it warns me about dangerous websites before I go to them. Uh, they have a dark web monitor that alerts me when my credentials appear where they should not. Uh, they have a NordPass password generator that keeps my passwords strong and difficult to hack into. And it hides my uh, IP address so that attackers can't easily find me while I am online. And one thing that I occasionally run into, y'all, especially while I am on YouTube, are these regionally blocked videos. Well, I can easily change the location of my VPN so that I can easily access the content that I need to for the Daily Doug. Take a look at this. This is my NordVPN uh, app here, and I am currently connected in the United States. But if I want to, I can go over here or I can say, hey, I want to go to Germany. And it'll automatically find the best and fastest server for me to connect to if I need to access content that's only available if you're in Germany. It's as easy as that, friends. And if I want to come back to the United States, I just click here on the flag and back it moves me. And it's quite a wonderful thing uh, to keep me going. So now is the time for you to get NordVPN, y'all, as they are currently running a great deal. Visit nordvpn.com slash Doug Helvering to get a huge discount with the purchase of a two-year plan plus four months for free. Uh, it is risk-free to try as NordVPN offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there is nothing to lose 
and peace of mind to gain. Friends, once again, the link is NordVPN slash Doug Helvering to get protected online today. Okay, y'all, now that we are properly protected by NordVPN and uh, we can uh, safely have some fun and listen to some music via the internet, let's get it, y'all. We're going to listen to side one of Signals. We've got Getty Lee on the bass and on the synths and vocals. Alex Lifeson is on the guitars, the Moog pedals as well. And uh, Neil Peart is on the drums and percussion. He is also the lyricist for all that we hear. Uh, like I said, we're going to be listening to my very own copy of the 40th anniversary uh, release of the studio recording on vinyl. Uh, as I look into all of the songs here, I have heard The Weapon, which is on site two as part of their Fear trilogy, but every other title uh, seems new to me. So I have imported all of side one and it's going to run uh, from beginning to end unless I stop it. So let's have some fun, y'all. Signals from Rush, side one. Off we go. Okay. Minor four. Ah, and the eight. One and two and three and four and four. So are they in B or are they are in F sharp? Sounds like B minor now. Flat six, flat seven, to one. was a single from the album, it became a staple of their live shows in the classic rock radio. See that's the five, that's F sharp, but it also seems like its own key. That's fascinating. I gotta stop it there. Hang on a second. Okay, so uh, verse two. Growing up, it all seems so one-sided. Uh, uh, opinions all provided, the future predecided, detached and subdivided in the mass pro mass production zone. Nowhere is the dreamer or the misfit so alone. So from Neil, this is about this mundane existence for a dreamer or a misfit amid housing subdivisions in suburbia. And like many of Neil's lyrics that I've observed, the situations and emotions uh, seem to be quite autobiographical here, where the social expectations, I think, were quite overt. We knew what society wanted you to do. And a person like him either had to, um, I'm looking ahead to the, uh, to the lyrics here, to conform or be cast out. So that's what he's talking about here in subdivisions, actual housing subdivisions. I'm going to keep going with, uh, with uh, subdivisions. Off we go. Cast out. Subdivision. Subdivision. So that's Neil's voice in the background from what I read. In the basement bars, in the backs of cars, be cool! You're be cast out. And here a synth takes the lead where I think with Classic Rush, we'd be expecting a guitar solo here. So it's, you know, it's putting the guitar a little bit in the background and, and elevating the synth here for this lead. That's a five, F sharp. Flat 
seven to one. Until it goes to the F sharp, it's a little bit different. But that's the two things that seems to be working with them. Suburbia as a prison, almost. It's like an open air prison <laughs> where curiosity and creativity go to die, you know, and all of the houses look like the other houses. Sense is what nice meal drums. Those scents are what sets apart this from sounds that I've heard from them previously. I've heard scents from there before, but not quite this integral to the tune. What a cool tune that was. Whew. Okay, it's going to keep rolling. The next one up is the Analog Kid. The idea for this lyric came during the band's stay in the British Virgin Islands during January of 1982, when Neil had the idea of writing a companion piece to the Digital Man, which is going to conclude this side. Listen to it go. Hot and windy August afternoon. Fills sound like rush fills too, don't they? Just the way that everything sounds. Nice. Again, they go to flat six and then to flat seven away from that A. So that's an F. see in city lights the busy streets and dizzy heights you call me this is a person a kid who's wanting to be out in the world and experiencing stuff all of creation you know they want to be in it and just just sucking the marrow out of all of them they want to be analog not digital Lying in the grass, unmoving, just staring at the sky. Enjoy yourself and let the time go by. Flat 
6. There's flat 7. Same move as before. Sounds great, doesn't it? Helps that I have this off of my vinyl. Just wanting to be outside. Enjoy himself. No? Getty's uh, m melodic stuff that he's singing seems to be a little bit lower than earlier stuff from him, so he's not quite as high and screechy. It's 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 just wonderful. Cool. Enjoy myself so far. Up next will be Chemistry, a song that was. Uh, developed during sound checks on their moving pictures tour. Okay. Okay. Third, just try, I'm finding hard to figure out where their one is. It sounds like the same flat six from the previous song, but that chord is different. They're in D, like D Mixolydian. We're just straight D minor. How do they make contact with one another? We're talking chemistry here. Relative major down to minor one. That's three. One. Emotion 
motion transmitted, motion received, much in the music in the abstract, positively. The lyrics are so profound, y'all. the other. Oh, but how do they make contact? It's a really cool set of analogies between what sounds like chemical reactions and social interactions. Seems to me it's just chemistry. solo. Major four down to three. Suspended one. Cool. I said in a recent video that I think Neil's my favorite drummer and is proving that here. Which is so good. Cool. I'm going to uh, stop that one before we get to the last song on this side because I want to talk a little bit about chemistry here. Uh, it marked the <clears throat> it marked the first time that each of the band members collaborated on uh, the uh, on the lyrics, and uh, they all put it together here. And like I said, it's all of these analogies uh, between how chemicals react when you add them together and how people react when you when you put them <laughs> in close contact with each other. Uh, you know, when you add chemicals together, they tend they tend to maintain their own nature. Uh, in their own identity, even when you're adding them together. Um, but uh, when we let, uh, when we uh, see humans interacting with other humans, I think we would agree we're all kind of fundamentally changed due to our humanity, just because of our brains and and noticing all of that. And it's and it's kind of making these um, analogies between how uh, humanity reacts to to change and addition and new things and how chemicals and chemistry reacts and of course it's smart one two three add without subtraction sound on sound multiplied reaction h to o no flow without the other oh but how they do make contact uh with one another it's so cool emotion transmitted emotion received music in the abstract positively elemental empathy a change of synergy music making contact naturally I'm taken with that. I really, really am. But uh, let's go on to the to the last song on this side, and this is Digital Man, and uh, it's kind of, uh, I think, related to uh, the Analog Kid that came before this, the second song that we listened to. This is a song that the band worked on while they were at Le Studio in Canada in late 1981. Uh, as I read in here, Getty's bass line was influenced by the sound of funk music. And there's also some ska influence in this song as well. Uh, the words here, the lyrics, it looks to be this sort of uh, sad story, a dark uh, story about a man who is um, working in a high-tech world. And it looks like what he's doing is listening and observing and watching uh, other people. I'm not sure in what context, but he is observing others while he himself is being observed. And he's not happy <laughs> about it. So let's see how this finishes up. The Digital Man, last song on side one of Signals. Off we go.
observation. We monitor his station. Sure, band who's been through it and they know what they want to do and they're pros at what they do by now and they're just doing their thing constant change is here to stay back and forth between that F sharp chord and that D chord. change on a set of these lyrics that I thought was really important. We'll come back to that when they're done. in that solo. singing from Getty as compared to the really high screeching stuff from earlier in their career. Seems more connected to the humanity of the music a little bit. This is that change that they did in the bridge back before. Yeah, I think 
that's gonna slowly fade out on side one. I hadn't heard any of those, y'all. My, um, my assumption was correct. I didn't recognize any of those titles and I, di and I didn't recognize any of the music either. But I loved every single title that was on there four great songs uh that we that we heard there um so subdivisions is kind of its own thing it's a wonderful tune and i loved chemistry as well but analog kid and um and digital man seem to be connected i know that analog kid was written after this one the one that we just heard but uh, it seems like maybe the analog kid is like the younger version of the digital man. Um, you know, the analog kid was dreaming of a life of freedom, a life of beauty, uh, a life of relationship, of being out in nature, looking up at the sky, daydreaming a little bit. And instead, if it's the same person, grows up and becomes the digital man and gets stuck in an average sort of, you know, white collar office in the new modern age. And, um, you know, Neil's lyrics are always wonderful. He, he surely lets us know what he thinks, even if he doesn't explicitly say it. Uh, his opinion of this kind of, of activity in modern society is quite overt. He's criticizing it. And he's accusing it of being responsible for, I don't know, sucking the life and soul out of those that get caught up in a lifestyle like that. Um, even in our, um, our final verse, the digital man is quite unhappy. Uh, in fact, so unhappy that he's looking forward to diving, uh, diving, dying. Uh, even though, uh, you know, uh, he's got a, a decent gig, it seems like. He just, he's just not happy. In the bridge, this is the words. He's got a force field and a flexible plan. Uh, he's got a date with fate in a black sedan. Okay. He plays fast forward just as long as he can. But he won't need a bed. He's a digital man. So... <sighs> It's kind of a warning, I think, from Neil. You know, will you, as the listener, you know, if as you hear this, are you going to fit into society's mold? Uh, are you going to do what's expected of you? Are you going to, you know, do the thing and pay your bills and get to the next paycheck and just live this monotonous life, this life of the digital man? Uh, or will you choose your own path, a different path, and attempt to live on your own terms? Um, that seems, those sorts of questions uh, and dichotomies tend, or, or seems to be a, um, a theme that Neil comes back to time and time again throughout uh, Rush songs and discography. And uh, as technology uh, changes and updates around them, I feel Neil getting more and more uh, just kind of perturbed at it all. And he'd just rather be, can we just be people and ta chat and enjoy all of this beautiful nature that's around us? Why do we stick ourselves inside and just do this monotonous stuff? It, it just, it just um, you know, sucks the marrow out of life. And I think that's his point on it. And it's a point well taken, and, it's, and it certainly works for them. And I cannot wait to get to Signal Side 2, y'all. But uh, I am going to wait, and I'll, and I'll get back to it, I think, next month. But that has been Side 1 of this beautiful album. I'm going to get my, uh, my picture disc out again. Absolutely love this, y'all. Isn't it beautiful? And then uh, next time... We'll see what happens when the dog starts peeing on the fire hydrant and see where it goes from there. But I believe that's going to be all for today. I am thankful for today's um, sponsor, NordVPN, and um, I'm just thrilled to continue to do this. And it's been a wonderful week of music. Come back next week, and we'll keep doing it uh, the same way. So thanks for being with me, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. It's the Daily Dog. Welcome 
to the Daily Dog, the Daily